All right. A lot of people are trying to get into raw foods, and they're confused. They don't know what to do. They're having some problems. They, they, I think they don't know the basic rules. They haven't read my book. So that's why we're making this video, because there's some common problems that people have and things that people do wrong. Matter of fact, I have a checklist in my book as to the main things people do wrong when they try to do raw food. So that's why we're making really this video. really helpful. Yeah. Um, a lot of people experience bloating, gas. They think, well, what's wrong with me? Well, that's, let's start with that first, because your gut bacteria helps break down your food. It helps, it helps get toxins out of you. It helps get nutrients in your system. It's very, very important. But you only have gut bacteria that feeds on whatever it is you've been eating. If you've not been eating healthy food for a long time, you're not going to have gut bacteria that thrives on healthy food. You're going to have yeast and other things that thrive on bread and wheat and sugar, bad foods and things like that, which you don't want because they don't really give you back health. They take health from you. They're very selfish <laughs> organisms. So when I was going through a bad eating phase in California, my son was about 15. Whenever we would drive to my brother's restaurant in Santa Monica and just fill up on all that good raw food, we would be so bloated and gassy and yeah. crampy afterward. Yeah, that's normal. Every single time we ate the raw food, but we were coming off of uh, coming off of a really, you know, not a veg it was vegetarian and vegan, but it was still bad. Yeah, veg it was really bad. Vegan does not mean healthy. We not made a video all. about that, you know. I mean, so that is normal if you're dirty inside, like right. I was. Right. If you've been eating meat and bread and cheese and dairy and all this other stuff, then you have stuff that in here that thrives on meat and bread and dairy and cheese. And you don't have any bacteria that thrives on greens and vegetables and vet produce and nuts and seeds and things like that. In that same sense, when somebody clean eats something bad, they feel it immediately. It's normal to just have weird digestive things happen. And like people say, I'm not meant to eat raw food. I'm genetically made to eat meat because I get bloated when I eat vegetables. Like they come up with all these excuses as to why they have to go back to eating cake and bad you know, and meat and all this other stuff. You've created inside you over the last 20, 30 years what it is that, it, that your food interacts with and the result of that. It's not going to be an instant switchover. It takes time to go to move into that newer uh, world where the old... It's like, it's like, okay, if you have, let's say you, uh, you have friends over, you all like to do drugs and the whole house is just full of druggies. You get tired of that and you want to say, oh, you know what? I want to clean this up. I want to get rid of this and I want to have healthy friends. I want to have a good life. So it takes a while to kick all these people out of your house. The, the fastest way to do it is to just stop putting drugs in the house and only put vegetables and fruit and greens in the house and watch how fast they leave. <laughs> That's how you get rid of parasites. It's the fastest way to get rid of parasites is you just stop feeding them what they like, which yeah. is sugar and bread and things like that and wheat products and cooked food. And then you just start putting green stuff in there, non-sweet green juices. And they're like, ew, they love what you love. They hate what you hate. I know, no, not a lot of people like green, you know, they all... And then, and that actually takes me to my second thing. The main problem that things people do wrong when they do raw food is they go nuts with the sugar. Everything they only pick things that are sweet that they love: mangoes, bananas, you know, watermelon, all the things that are sweet. Naturally, they think, well, it's okay, it's healthy. It, it is better than pizza, but it's high sugar. Almost all the stuff you buy in the produce section is bread for sugar. There are things that are naturally not high in sugar, you know, blackberries, blueberries, green apples instead of red apples. Uh, papayas are actually good for you. Mangoes are too sweet. So it's selectively, but that's the big one of the biggest mistakes people make is, yeah, just because you're in the raw food world doesn't mean you're not doing the comfort food in the raw food world. And that is all sugar. Orange juice has as much concentrated sugar in it as Coca-Cola does. You're taking the fiber out. It's not natural to drink a glass of orange juice. It's natural to eat an orange. Eating fruit is fine in its whole form, or you can blend it, 
but juicing it pushes the fiber out. Nutritionfacts.org even did a video showing that when you juice, you're throwing stuff out that's more than just fiber. There are beneficial things that you're losing by juicing. And I'll put the link down below that. It's already been scientifically shown. So what, again, you're separating yeah, the, 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 the fiber, which is one of the most important. Fiber is the main food source for your gut bacteria. Oh, yes. um, so if you have too much sugar in there, you're feeding bacteria, viruses, fungus, yeast, mold, all that other stuff. It's just too much sugar. So anyway, so that's one of the big mistakes that the raw foodists make. They go for sugar and sweet things and they stay away from the bitter things and the greens. Most people eat mainly fruit, not enough greens. You know, and then they're, they're, they have this misinformation and bad, like nuts and seeds are bad for you. You know, like and things like that. Avoid the nuts and seeds and the, the heavy. Moderation is okay. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, they're good for you, especially like some of these seeds, pumpkin seeds, oh, those walnuts. Really yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. right. Almonds. Um, basically, anything you find in nature is good for you other than the poisonous plants. <laughs> but and they actually have medicinal pur purposes, too. But that's a, I don't want to get into that. But the point is that. Eat things the way you find them in nature, as close to the form that you find it in nature. In other words, eat an apple, blend an apple, but don't eat an apple pie. Just because it's got an apple in the apple pie doesn't mean it's good for you. Uh, people use French fries. Well, that, well that's, a, that's a vegetable. It's a, it's a potato. No, it's not good for you anymore. You processed it. Not processing your food as much as possible is the key. Not heating it over 118 degrees or 45 degrees Celsius is you still have the life force. In other words, the best way to describe the heat factor of raw food is if you take an apple and you plant it in the ground, you get an apple tree. But if you bake the apple in an oven, which is what most people do with their food, high heat, and then you plant the apple in the ground, nothing happens. It's dead. You've killed it. Something happens with high heat that killed them. The reason people even cook their food in the first place is to kill bad things, right? To kill the bacteria, to kill the... the anything that could be living and growing in there. Um, and it breaks down the fiber, breaks it into simple sugars, and you're, you're changing the form of the food in which it's found in nature. And then some people are going to say, well, yeah, but it makes this, some of the vitamins more assimilable, like lycopene and tomatoes. That's rare. Most of the vitamins that you get, are you going to get a lot from raw food and, and actually you can overdose or get too much of something. Nature gives everything to you in the right amounts. If you start changing that and manipulating it and just messing with it, you're going to get into problems down the road. So the general rule of raw food is eat it the way you find it in nature. Blending it is okay because that's kind of similar to chewing, to masticating it. Most people don't chew their food enough, so blending helps in that situation. You know, when you're wa wanting to change your diet, that's pretty significant. So you're going to have to um, replace these comfort foods, these foods that you've relied on all your life to for sustenance and, you know, feel good and textures. You're going to have to replace that. I understand there's foods that we just love that we don't want to change. Pizza, pasta. Yep, pizza, pasta. Enter cake. this cookbook. Yeah. We have so many great recipes in here. They're pretty darn easy to make. And we have recipe videos. There's video links to our recipes. So yeah. not only do is, can you read it? You can see how to make it. There's really no excuse. Raw food is so filling because it's so nutrient dense. Yeah. And... I mean, you could just do one or two meals a day and you're fine. And I would really suggest you guys check out my salad videos. Incorporate a salad every single day of your life. I have, and the few days I go without my salad, I don't feel good. If we go out and eat, I come home later and I make my salad. I cannot go without a salad. We're talking to people who are just moving into raw foods. They hear the word salad, they go, ugh, forget that. That's I, I, I want my, my pizza, salad. I want my pasta, I want my chocolate cake, I want my creme brulee, I want my blah, blah, blah. So that's why we created this book to get all the favorite junk food that you're used to, your Chinese food, your Indian food, Italian food. All the cuisines covered. Yeah. Desserts that you love, the crepes, the creme brulees, the Thai food, Mexican food, everything that you love, the chicken soup. Yeah, everything we grew up on, our comfort food. It's all in here. We found a way to but make it a healthy, healthy version, version of it. It's that un. Uh, what is it? Healthycookbook.com. It's at healthycookbook.com. 
Uh, you can also get the ebook, but get the real book and look at look at this pizza, pasta. We got everything that you love, and we have some quick ones too, like freezer chocolate. You love chocolate? You can make this thing in like literally a minute and a half. Put it in your freezer and be eating it within a few minutes. That's less time than it takes to go to the store and buy some chocolate. So there's no excuse. You can have healthy versions of the junk food that you love that you gotten used to. It's at healthycookbook.com, but this is the second book you should be reading. Right. The first book is the core book. It is, and you can get more simpler recipes. You can download this for free at healyourself101.com. If you don't want the paperback, I suggest you get the paperback because holding a real book in your hand is just something about it. But this walks you through everything. It starts you from the beginning, walks you through the basics of, of the raw food lifestyle, what to do, what not to do. It has a shopping list that shows you what to buy in the store. Like, okay, go to the store and buy this stuff. And then it brings you home and it tells you what to do, how to, how to prepare it, what to do. It's really easy. Basically, it holds your hand through the yeah. entire scary process. Yeah. And it's really not scary. It's, it's, it's so easy. But the recipes in this book, though, are the ones that the newbie, sh the new raw fooder should be making. These are simple to make. They're very healthy. They're very filling and they're very delicious. And also keep in mind that we are creatures of habit. We have been accustomed to Aunt Jemima maple syrup over organic, you know, pure maple syrup. Um, but once you start getting used to less salt or, or greens or kale over iceberg lettuce, once you get used to it, after a couple of weeks, you start craving that, especially this healthy food. Your body innately craves, it wants this healthy food. Um, it's your parasites that are fighting you in the beginning. Yeah. Um, fight back, be strong, and continue putting the healthy food in your b body, and you will not be going back. I mean, yeah. I just feel so good. A, a lot of these recipes, Actually, it's the fountain of youth for crying out loud. It it doesn't it doesn't um accelerate the shortening of your telomeres. The telomeres are like your life meters. Yeah. I these are all all the recipes in here are actual pictures of what I was eating when I went raw and what I did for each. And what you made for yourself. Yeah, he this, doesn't this like is, to put food together. This is, I don't, I want to, I'm in a hurry. I just want to get it done and eat it, but I want it to taste good. So these- So if he can do this- These are the actual recipes no that I did when I went raw. And while all, while he's writing books too and working nonstop yeah. and he found the time to make this. I, we weren't, weren't together when you made this book, no. but those recipes are fantastic. I urge anybody trying to get into raw food to check this out, um, follow those recipes to a T. If you do a lot of sugar, sweet stuff, you're gonna get bloating because sugar feeds everything inside you, including your, any bacteria you have is gonna blow it out. So try to like ease off the sugar. It's okay, I know there's transition stuff. I have chocolate in here and all this other stuff, um, but try to do more spicy or savory foods. Better. Try to get more greens. For your maker smoothies, the general formula is just don't put all fruit in there like everybody does. It should good be, to put a little aloe vera should, chunk yeah, in there half without green. the skin. It should be half greens, half fruit. That's the general rule for when I say to do smoothies, half greens, half fruit, not all fruit, and then put a bunch of almond milk and, you know, just everybody, just everything they do is sweet stuff. That's that's the part of the problem. Fiber takes a while to switch over from the gut bacteria that was raised on bread and meat and beer and pizza. That takes a while to get that out and get the good stuff to start breeding. Um, take some probiotics and enzymes to help speed the process. But anyway, we have all kinds of recipe videos on this channel, all kinds of them, uh, and health things and general things, how to clean out your body. If you want to speed up the process, we sell an enema bag too at caraenema.com. When you're going to the YouTube channel and you want to check out the recipes, there is a button that you can click where you just get the recipes. Yeah, it's a playlist. Uh, it's a playlist. I don't know much. About if you go to thehealthylife.com, there's a recipe playlist. And uh, and I just, I would, I wish somebody had that for me when I was, if I was trying to go raw. Yeah. 
It's it's great. It's a plethora of really great filling recipes. And I remember when one of my customers in Santa Monica was going raw. He was 53 years old, overweight, old, gray hair. I mean, he looked 65. He was 53. And um, he jumped on the raw bandwagon himself. And he was like, one day he goes, oh, my God, Cara, I can't believe this. I haven't eaten since... No, wait, he, it's eight hours and I'm not even hungry. And I'm like, isn't this crazy? I mean, if you go raw, this lifestyle, it's just amazing how it, 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 you're, there's a saying, it's, it's a shame that you're, most people will never realize how good their bodies can feel in their lifetime. And you, Chances are you'll never be able to experience that feeling unless you change your diet, right? Raw foods enabled me to experience nirvana physically. Don't think this is a life sentence. People think, oh, God, you mean I'll never be able to, you know, this is what you should do to cleanse, to heal, to become a new vibrant person who has a new lease on life. After that, you can start getting a little more flexible, not going back to the really bad things, but just having a little bit more of a variety of things that you can do, as long as it's still in the healthy realm. And we'll cover that in another video. But raw food is, if you want to heal, if you want to become a new person and you want to just, just totally clean yourself out and start over, that's what you should do. And then you can fine tune it a little bit after that. Um, but so don't look at this as like, oh, God, I'll never be able to do enjoy you know, life again. We, we go out to restaurants once in a while and we have, you know, I might have twice a year. I might have a piece of cheesecake or something and we don't feel guilty about it and it doesn't hurt us. You just keep it under control. But don't think that like that right from the beginning. You got you got to just start pure for a while, you know, do it for as long as you can, then adapt to what works for you. But try 100%. And the main thing is, I mean, I, I keep saying this over and over. One of the biggest things that people do wrong in raw food is they go for too much sugar, too much sweet stuff. Uh, and and uh, that's it just cascades into issues. Nothing wrong with fruit. Nothing wrong with anything that's in nature, in moderation. but you got to know the amounts in which to do it and how to, to do it. Um, and uh, don't, you know, the idea is not to cook your food. And then people say, well, it's cold. I don't want cold food. I hate cold food, especially in the wintertime. Who said raw food is cold? It doesn't have to be cold. You can heat it up. That's why we have dehydrators. And we you did know. a video where we showed that it's the same temperature. Yeah. It's actually hotter than your hot tub. 120 degrees Fahrenheit, 45 Celsius, is hotter than a hot tub. I'm talking about the, the temperature of the actual meal. Yeah. Compared to a cooked meal. By the time you're eating oh, that right, meal, right. cooked meal, when it cools down, it's they're the same temperature. We're, we're going to do a video about this where you, where you get food from a restaurant and they bring it to you and it's piping hot. You can't eat it right away because oh, it's too hot, right? You got to wait for it to cool down. Well, what temperature is that food when it cools down enough to where you can eat it and it feels good? It's usually around 120 degrees Fahrenheit, 45 Celsius. Mm -hmm. Here's the best way to think about raw food, the way to describe it. In the hot sun, like right now, it's, it's boiling out there. It can be 120 degrees here in Vegas in the summer. And let's say an apple falls from the tree and it gets baked at 120 degrees, 45 Celsius by the sun. It's just going to shrivel up but it'll still grow an apple tree. It's still got life force in it. So that temperature is still okay. Now, if you put it at 350 degrees, that apple's not gonna, that's dead. You've created mush. That, or that's not living food anymore. So that's the basic way to think of raw food. It can be warm. You can have soup, you can have warm food, you can warm your food in the dehydrator. Just don't kill it with high heat. You know, if you want heat, you know, what we used to do in our restaurant in San Francisco, it was always so cold in the inner sunset, was, you know, we'd kind of, you know, get, put spices on there, cayenne and, and, uh, yeah, but people like actual habanero. heat. Well, that's heat too. That heats your blood. Yeah. Right. Probably more heating inside you than a cooked meal. But you, you do that. You pull things out of the hydrator and give it right to me. And I eat it right away yeah. and it's nice and warm. So yeah. you can get warm food. You can get your pizza and pasta and Thai food and Chinese food and Indian food and Mexican food and 
have it the way you're used to, but the healthy version of it that's prepared just a little bit different where it's not dead and it's not gonna create problems for you. And if you're looking to lose weight, I suggest making a huge salad, like one of my salads here, and get full on that because it's so nutrient- Well, it's full of fiber. Well, yeah, it's so fiber, full of fiber and nutrient dense that you're not gonna be hungry for hours afterward. Basically, if you eat nothing but raw food, you're gonna lose weight. Yeah. It's just, I mean, unless you're just doing maple syrup and stuff. And yes, I know cashews aren't totally raw. Actually, we do have some raw cashews that yeah. we get from... Uh, uh, Artisan. No, it's... I'll put the link down below. Um, and... Uh, Divine Organics. Div Divine Organics, yeah. So, you, so there are raw cashews, and they are prepared sustainably by willing people. <laughs> anyway, so uh, yeah. there are... Um, and yeah, maple syrup isn't totally raw. Look, we're not extremists, okay? We're not like fanatical about it. We're just doing the, the main thrust of it. And it's good enough and it works great for us. It's worked, f it, anyway. So that's, that's it. The, the, um, the base, the base book, the core book, you can get at healyourself101.com. The download is free if you get the ebook version of it. I suggest get the paperback because it's just something about holding a real book in your hands and it, it'll change your life. It changed our life. And, uh, well, this is the book Marcus wrote that you changed your life with. Yeah. When 30 years he's looking for help in the outside world and you yeah. couldn't find it in the man made world. And, of course, health. That's why, um, I don't know, every time I see a naysayer against powders and herbs, I'm like, do you guys realize that those, the healing properties of those have been used for thousands of years for a reason? Yeah. I've experienced such healing properties, like it, just mind blowing firsthand from herbs, never from a pharmaceutical. <laughs> okay, so the that's- The farm I see. So there you go. That's our little uh, summary of, uh, Read the book. It walks you through all the things to do and not to do. It's got checklists. It's a great book. And don't close your eyes to like, okay, I'm doing most of the things on this checklist and you close your eyes to two of them. Those are the two things that are gonna screw you up, okay? Do all the things on the checklist. Don't cheat. All right, good luck. Good luck to your uh, new life. I know you're gonna love it. And we'll do our best to keep guiding you along the way. Yeah. Everything that you need is in this book, is in these two books, and in YouTube videos. Yeah, so, so. good luck. Hope you guys have a wonderful journey on the way, and uh, very excited for you. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.